I have talked about this technology on the channel earlier, but so many people appear to be so incredibly naive and unaware of the insane changes that have been made within the last few months to the world of electric vehicles and battery storage that it is 100% necessary that I make this video showing you what is happening and how it is about to rapidly change the world in ways that people still aren't paying any attention to. Hello my friends, welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking, great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers, welcome back everyone else and thank you for tuning in and subscribing to the channel. Thank you to our Patreon supporters, YouTube members, wonderful to have you in 2022 and thank you for your support this year. If you'd like to join our Facebook group where yes, even many people there haven't apparently watched this video or at least the one I made alluding to this technology, I'll put a link in the description below. Welcome to all our Facebook members, by the way, all the new members, great to have you guys. It's been a few hundred over the last few days. Welcome to the group. A new type of low cost battery will solve the renewable energy storage problem, giving us a better way to store the energy from solar. By the way, solar panels have just gotten 30% cheaper within the last two months because the three biggest solar panel makers in the world are competing in a crazy competition. And apparently the raw costs have gone down Solar is becoming much cheaper, but the thing is, solar and wind. Wind blows at night, solar is really good in the day, but there's still times when we still need to store that energy. It's being wasted. We need batteries, we need energy storage. Plus, we need to save all those lithium ion batteries to go into electric cars. But actually, maybe we don't because BYD now and CATL plan on actually using sodium batteries in EVs. In fact, there's two other companies in addition that are also working on sodium batteries for EVs. That said, there is still a shortage of lithium, which has led to the current lithium crisis. When you say crisis, there is a crisis. The cost of lithium has skyrocketed to astronomical levels. It's up about 600% this year. It's mental. That has meant massively increased costs for battery materials for electric vehicle manufacturers. But now a new revolution is coming and it will change the world. It may change the value of your stocks, by the way. You need to consider this when you invest. And you know, I previously had stocks in, well, Piedmont for one of them, in other lithium miners. I'm reconsidering my positions. I'll tell you what I do over the next couple of months. Here's the challenge. 30% of global CO2 emissions are produced by coal-fired power plants. Decarbonizing the electric grid is a vital part of combating climate change and getting rid of these coal power plants as soon as possible. Now, all of them will die off naturally. They will, 100%. But it's better to do it quickly than to make it take a long time. The reason I say they'll all die off is because coal plants are very expensive to run in comparison to the cost of modern renewables. That's true. But we need to speed the transition to a clean electrical grid if we want to stop getting, well, lots of illnesses, right? Emissions from gasoline-powered cars and diesel-powered cars cause cancer. They cause many premature deaths every year. In fact, people say it's millions due to bad. In fact, scientists say it causes millions of premature deaths every year. The same thing needs to happen when it comes to coal power plants. They also cause enormous emissions, smog, stuff that you're going to breathe in and choke up your lungs. Now, we can speed the transition to a clean electric grid by storing excess energy in massive batteries. But lithium-ion ones are expensive and they're sold out. No, I'm actually not serious, but I am serious. Tesla makes an insane amount of energy storage right now. They didn't used to, but they do now. Their Lathrop facility manufactures about the equivalent of half a million EVs worth of battery packs every single year. They're ramping that production and increasing it. They're actually sold out now for nearly two years, even though they've just increased their production by about 300%. Solar and wind power have become dramatically cheaper over the past couple of decades. However, these sources still depend on environmental conditions. Without wind, turbines can't spin. And if the sun isn't shining, solar panels can't harvest the energy. Well, actually they can. They still work when it's not sunny, just not as well as they do when it's sunny. But when it's dark, well, they don't really work. That makes these sources less consistent than fossil fuels in some ways, which can be dispatched on demand. And so even while solar and wind continue to grow, utilities continue to rely on gas to fill gaps and keep the electric grid stable. However, with energy storage, 
With massive, enormous batteries, we can speed the transition to renewable power by storing excess energy in batteries and then deploying it when the sun and wind aren't cooperating with demand. Many newer renewable energy plants are being paired with big banks of lithium-ion batteries, but lithium is relatively expensive, especially at the moment, and mining it is, well, not always great for the environment. Storage solutions that are manufactured using plentiful resources like sodium have the potential to guarantee greater energy security more broadly and allow more countries to join the shift towards decarbonization, said Shen Long Zhao, an energy storage researcher at the University of Sydney here in Australia where I'm from. What's new? Existing RTNAS batteries have had limited storage capacity and a short life cycle, which has held back their commercialization. But there's now a new kind of sodium battery developed by Zhao's team at the university in Sydney. According to their paper, the device has four times the storage capacity of a lithium-ion battery and an incredibly long life. After 1,000 cycles, it still retained half of its capacity, while the researchers claim that is unprecedented. This leap was possible thanks to the incorporation of carbon-based electrodes and the use of a process called pyrolysis to improve the reactivity of the sulfur and the reactions between the sulfur and the sodium. This is a significant breakthrough for renewable energy development, which re although reduces costs in the long term, has had several financial barriers to entry, said Zhao. Not to mention, whether or not it's a financial barrier to entry is relevant or true or not, well, some people would debate that issue, because if we transition the world to renewables, within the next 10 years, the world will actually save more than $15 trillion, according to Oxford University. That's a lot of money to save. But realistically, there is a problem with supply. There isn't going to be enough lithium long term. The big picture, so far, the Sydney researchers have only created and tested lab-scale versions of their sodium batteries. They now plan to focus on scaling up and commercializing this technology, which will take a number of years. However, there are many other alternatives to lithium-ion batteries that can be used for renewable energy storage and for EVs today. Those include long-living flow batteries, massive water batteries, and batteries that store electricity as heat in bricks, sand, and other solid materials. The sooner we scale up our use of renewables and deploy more of these sodium batteries, which have four times the energy density of lithium batteries. By the way, that rule doesn't apply to sodium batteries in general. It's just the ones that have been manufactured and designed at the university in Sydney. But batteries like these will increase our chances of avoiding the worst effects of climate change and leave the world in a better place for our children rather than a worse one. Now, the great thing about these batteries is not the fact that we can just deploy them as a solution to the renewable energy puzzle. It's also the fact that we can actually use them in electric cars. And that's what two of the world's biggest, in fact, the world's biggest, the world's two biggest battery manufacturers are doing right now. They say, they say that this year, they will have sodium battery in electric cars. This will significantly reduce the cost of EVs, especially in the long term, once sodium batteries come down in price, as they inevitably will. Now, the great thing about sodium is it's one of the most abundant resources on the earth. It's not hard to actually get sodium, whereas lithium is definitely a much more challenging product, not only to mine, but also to refine. Sodium batteries, my friends, are here now, and they will unquestionably change the landscape on, what, on which we live in. Now, if your friends haven't seen this video, please share it with them. People seem to believe that EVs can't be cheaper. They aren't the solution to the future because they're too expensive and they just won't work. But here is yet another reason why they are wrong. Thank you for watching. I'll see you again on the next video. Bye-bye.